Right away. We have like two minutes left. Okay. There we go. This conference will now be recorded. Hi, before we get started, um, I see Tim Rossi. Um, which is the commissioner, but I see another Tim. Uh, could you unmute yourself and identify, please? That'd be Tim Pogwiz. I think I'm here early. Oh, oh yeah. Can you come in at five? Hey, Tim, can you come in at five? Um, I can try, but I talked to Pat earlier. I have limited Wi Fi, so I'll do my very okay. best. Okay. okay, thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Caller one, will you identify yourself, please? Whoever is on the phone, if you're on a phone, I think you're caller one. Can you identify yourself, please? Uh, Lauren, can you hear me? Lauren. I'm going to call this uh, Port Arthur Planning Commission meeting for Tuesday, January 4th, 2020, um, 2020, oh, 2022 to order now. Um, commissioners, the plan is, is we have about 30 minutes to do our planning commission, um, our planning commission business. And then uh, we need to again get to our workshop. So the Mr. Kessler, I'm going to ask you to get off and join us at five. There's some planning business that we have to attend to that you can't um, you can't be here for. So we'll see you at five. Um, and then we're going to plan on starting the workshop at five o'clock um, uh, with the city council members um, just so that we as the planning commission can really see and have that communication with the city council about what exactly they're looking for in terms of the short-term vacation rentals so 
Um, my goal is to have, and we need to look at kind of the numbering. So, uh, so commissioners, if you look at the numbering, you can see five, it goes to elections of 2022 planning commission officers. And then the next one down review of planning commission application should be six. So if you want to renumber those, so it should go six starts with review, seven's the public hearing, eight's the planning matters, nine's the workshop and vacation rentals, 10 should be the public considerations, and 11 is the adjournment. So if you just want to renumber your agenda, um, that would work. So now I'm going on to number two. Um, we had done public considerations in, instead of the public comments. However, there was a um, community member who is attending who would like to do a public comment prior to agenda item number eight, the planning matters. So um, I am proposing that we add a public comment section after approval of minutes. Shayla, can we do that? Yes. Okay. So my proposal is after the approval of minutes, we add a public comment section um, are there any objections to that? Commissioners, any objections or are we okay? Do you want to give me a head nod or a good, good panel? I see you now. No, no, no problem. Okay. So I'm going to say we're going to add after approval of minutes, we're going to add that as agenda item revised number five for public comments. Again, there'll be a three minute time limit on that, those comments. And then we'll renumber. So elections would be six, review would be seven, public hearing eight, planning matters nine, uh, workshop would be 10, public considerations 11, and adjournment would be 12. Are we okay with that, commissioners? Yes. Okay. So um, I'm assuming not everybody um, got uh, the agenda. So do I have a motion to approve this meeting's agenda? <coughs> Commissioner Burt, I uh, um, make a motion to approve the agenda as is. Do I have a second? It's um, with, with the changes, Commissioner Burt. Oh, I'm sorry, with the amended or the added public comments section. Okay, do I have a second? Commissioner Thielen, I'll second that. Okay, so do I have any discussion? Okay, oh, commissioners. Uh, <laughs> Jim, can you mute your mic, please? Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. Okay. Commissioners, I'm going to ask you to turn on your video um, and turn on your sound. If you approve this motion, just please say aye. 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 Yes. Yes. And yes for Nirat. So this uh, Commissioner Schofield, Burnt, Dylan, Rossi, and Nirat all approve. Um, approval of minutes. Did everybody get a chance to read the minutes from last time? Okay, do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the November 2nd, 2021 meeting? I motion to approve the Planning Commission meeting minutes from November 2nd, 2021. Do I have a second? Rossi, second. Any discussion? Commissioners, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And there it is an aye. Um, motion is approved unanimously. So now we're moving on to number five, public comments. Please come up. And then we're just gonna ask you to turn on your microphone and speak into it and I'll start the three minutes. <laughs> Please 
Good afternoon, Chair Nirat and members of the Port Orford Planning Commission. My name is Penelope Cease or Penny Cease. I live at 834 Deedee Street in Port Orford. And I have this statement regarding the request for extensions of CUP 1602 and CUP 1603, which is your number eight, I believe now on the agenda. In 2020, Elk River Property Development, ERPD, received a third one-year extension of its conditional use permits for construction of a pipeline to carry recycled water from Port Orford's wastewater treatment plant through the city with a planned terminus on leased farmland to the north. This 2020 extension expired on April 11, 2021, as recorded in a city council decision order signed on June 29, 2020. By any plain reading of that fact, the pipeline project died on April 12, 2021 for lack of a further extension. The CUPs are no longer in effect. Port Orford Municipal Code does not allow for extensions of such permits for longer than one year, nor do they renew automatically. The applicant must come back to the Planning Commission every year that it wishes to keep its permits in effect. Now ERPD is before you with a request for yet a fourth extension, more than eight months beyond the expiration date of the previous one. Their excuses for inaction might explain delays in the process of the project, but do not explain why they could not have asked for another extension in a timely manner. Nor should ERPD be excused from failure to officially notify Port Orford of a major change in their application which is the resignation of the project engineer. How will this affect the facts of the application? Is the city being asked to accept that everything remains the same, even after nearly six years have passed and a new engineer as yet unknown will be in charge? No substantive report on the progress of the project has ever been offered, only statements that nothing has been accomplished due to circumstances. An entirely new application must be submitted for consideration based on current facts and with the participation of the new engineering firm. Approved permits from outside agencies, including the Department of Environmental Quality, must also be submitted to the city along with any new application. For the reasons I have just stated, the Planning Commission must deny the request to extend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Burns, I see that you're on this meeting. I'm gonna ask you to get off and rejoin us at about five o'clock. Do we have any other public comments? Go ahead, Ann, I saw you. Hello and happy new year, everyone. I wanted to start this year by thanking you all for the excellent work you did in 2021. We didn't have a chance to uh, talk about that in December. I feel like the Port Orford Planning Commission made some great improvements in developing a more robust and straightforward public process for addressing some of the important planning issues in our community. Through the lighting ordinance and the building heights issues, I feel like you moved ahead in forging a super helpful way of conduct of working, a model for how to address issues in the future collaborating with city council, conducting research, holding public meetings and making recommendations. I want to thank Chair Nyrith in particular for her leadership and all of you for your contributions to this. Planning issues that continue to arise have pointed out the need for more updates and fixes to some of our out of date ordinances and for a clear, fair and transparent public process. So I hope you'll continue to work on those updates and fixes in the coming year. I'd also like to comment briefly on the one land use decision you have before you today. In short, you're being asked to an extend an application that expired last spring. I hope that as you consider this issue, you will think about the need to be consistent and fair and following our local ordinances. If you allow one person to not renew and then just come back later with a request to reinstate, do you intend to allow others to do the same? I'd hope that as part of doing a better job of city government, you'll aim to be fair to everyone so that laws don't apply differently to different people owing to uh, certain personal connections or such. Thank you very much for considering my comments and I wish everyone a happy new year. 
Thank you, Ann. I appreciate it. Any other comments? Mr. Haley, let's see if we can unmute you. Hello? Okay, now we can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, perfect. Well, I, I appreciate um, both the citizens talking about the, the application uh, being past due, but you know, I've, I've consulted with our land use attorney, and I don't know whether he's present or not, but I think he was going to try and weigh in here. And, you know, this, this conditional use application uh, went to Luba over the word and. Um, and we prevailed on that in, on January 22nd, 2020. Yeah, was that right? 2020, 2021, I guess. And so that was the end of the litigation on this conditional use application. And uh, Friends of Metolius versus Jefferson County, 31, or Luba 160, 1996, um, provides, provides guidance to you on the, on the timeline for that conditional use uh, application or a permit. So that's, that's really what I wanted to say. And we're, you know, we're, we're trying, we're getting there and it's, you know, it's a long process and uh, DEQ still working on it. And, you know, COVID sure hasn't helped us any. So thank you for the time. Thank you, Jim. Any other public comment? Okay, we're gonna move on now to uh, agenda number six, elections of the 2022 Planning Commission officers. Um, so we will start with the first um, officer, the chair. Um, do I have any nominations for the chairperson for the next year for the Planning Commission? Go ahead, Mr. Thielen, Commissioner Thielen. I nominate uh, you, uh, Kristen Neurat. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Commissioner Jesuit. Hi, Jean. I didn't see you up there. Oh, I've had internet fun. Do we have any other nominations? Okay. Um, I accept the nomination, so I guess we'll vote. Um, Commissioner Thielen? Yes. Commissioner Burnt? Yes. Commissioner Jesuit? Yes. Commissioner Rossi? Yes. Commissioner Schofield, I see you tonight. Yes. And I'm gonna abstain, um, so motion passed. So thank you all very much. Do we have a nomination for vice chair? I'll nominate uh, this Commissioner Thiele. I nominate uh, Commissioner Barrett. Do I have a second? Uh, Rossi, second. Do we have any discussion? Any other nominations? Okay. Commissioner Jesuit. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Thielen? Yes. Commissioner Schofield? Yes. Commissioner Rossi? Yes. Commissioner Burnt? I think you have to abstain. <laughs> if I can vote yes for myself, yes. <laughs> Commissioner Riyad is a yes. So, Commissioner Burnt, congratulations, Vice Chair. Thank you, everyone. How do we do the secretary? Thank you. Okay. And I think for the secretary, we always just made Patty do it. It was a voluntold. I think that's how we do that, correct? I don't know, it's been a long year. Jayla? 
a member of staff generally served as secretary of the planning commission. Yo, I know Jessica Ginsburg to be the secretary of the planning commission. To Rossi, second. And I'm assuming commissioners, um, and just by if you unmute yourself and say aye, that we're all in a, a, a unanimous agreement that uh, Ms. Ginsburg will be the secretary. So aye. 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 Yes. We all said yes, that was an unanimous. Thank you very much. Now we're moving on to seven a review of the Planning Commission applications for appointment. Um, there are two. Uh, to commissioner, commissioner, sorry, I'm trying to make sure I get into the microphone. There are two commissioners who uh, terms are up. Uh, mine is one of them. I believe mine is up in March and Commissioner Burns is up in February. So just by, I think what we need to do as a commission is that we just review them and then we decide if we want to send them on to the council or not. So, do we need to do it? Okay, so do I have approval to send both my uh, application and Commissioner Burns application to the city council? Because if not, you all have to re vote again for the chair and vice chair. I'm just letting you all know. That. <laughs> uh, I move that we send both of those applications on to the city council. So, Commissioner Thielen moves. Do I have a second? Second, Rossi. Commissioner Rossi seconds. Just by um, your uh, voice uh, uh, voice approval, commissioners, uh, we have any discussion? So if we do a voice approval, just say aye. 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 Do we have any uh, against? So it passes unanimously. Okay, now we're on to planning matters. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Crystal. Um, we're on agenda. So we have eight uh, agenda item eight. We have no public hearing. So now we're on agenda item nine planning matters. So Crystal, take it away. Okay. Good afternoon. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I have a short staff report here to give a little background. And you've heard some of this already. Uh, the city of Port Orford received a request for a one-year extension of time on land use approvals, CUPs 1602 and 1603. The approvals for construction were granted in April of 2017, the applicant Elk River Development LLC. And they are asking for another extension at this time. And the letter is attached in your application. So the Port Orford Municipal Code, Chapter 1732, uh, Conditional Uses, states, authorization of a conditional use shall be void after one year or such lesser time as the authorization may specify unless substantial construction has taken place. However, the Planning Commission may extend the authorization for an additional period not to exceed one year upon written application to the Planning Commission. So I put some background in here. Um, one year extensions were granted in 2018, 2019, and 2020. Um, in 2020, the uh, approval was appealed to the city council and um, ultimately to Luba. And so this um, permit was approved in the city's favor, January 22nd, 2021. And attorneys have um, informed me that while it's at Luba, um, it is not uh, time for doing a renewal. And so the renewal is, according to the applicants, proposed for January 22nd, 2021. And we have brought it before you so it could be approved by that time. Crystal, can I ask you a question? This is Commissioner yes. Ryan. So when you say the city council's approval was affirmed on January 22nd, 2021, was that then affirmed by Luba? Yes, it was. Okay, so then my question to you, I guess, so thank you for that. My question then becomes, is, is that then when the time frame starts? Yes. So it doesn't matter, That's like the time, the time that it's appealed to Luba is not counted into the one year. 
That's that's the interpretation that I received. Okay, thank you. It would be not logical to be um, going for an extension when you don't know if you're gonna be able to do it and you're in Luba. So going on, state permitting, um, the reason for these extensions is to allow, allow for things like state permits and things like that. And normally in my experience in planning, uh, most wording is like this in most jurisdictions. And the reason for having it is to allow people to finish their projects. And many times they don't have a lot of control over things that are going on with their projects. And so people are denied only when they are not um, moving forward in any way or not attempting to move forward at that point. So for that reason, I have a recommendation that the extension be granted as requested. And I've just uh, attached some of the more of the Port Orford Municipal Code that talks about right of review, because this is what we had last year. We had a review by the city council. So that's just a short staff report um, in response to the application. Thank you, Crystal. Um, commissioners, do you guys have any questions for Crystal or Shayla at this time based on the information provided? Yes, I, I have a question for Crystal. Um, so as I understand it, the uh, while the application was in Luba being challenged in Luba, it was not in effect that so that the the work had the so it was not viable or it was work could not happen during that period of time. Is that correct? I'd, I'd rather you would um, address this to Shayla because she's the attorney and this is an attorney court cases. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, Shayla, did you hear that or did you? Sure, yeah, okay. I heard. So there's a little bit of precedent out there that says that the timeline of the one year begins to run when the application has gone through the appeals process because it doesn't make sense for construction to begin during an, when an appeal is pending. It's, it's an onerous expense to go through just to either be turned down and say that you cannot do your construction or you know that you can. And so there's case law out there that cites that the timeline begins when the appeal period is over. And in this case, it was over in January of 2021. And so it would be my position that this application, this request for an extension is timely based upon that loop of precedent. Then uh, a follow-up question. Uh, was the uh, challenge to the um, conditional use to Luba, was that done immediately after the uh, in other words, how long was how long of a time was that um, that zone where that where nothing could happen? How long was it? In, how long were they not able to? to that would have work? gone from April. That, I don't know. that would have gone from April till the time that Luba affirmed January twenty second, twenty twenty one. I see. We don't have any control over when Luba makes their decisions. They they make their decisions in their own time frames. So so it was cleared January in January of 21. So then we would assume that are we assuming then that the it has been in effect this whole time that it was not voided? I mean if there was a, if there were six months or whatever uh, that where they couldn't do work or where it was not in effect, did it become in effect in January 21? Yes, their permit was effective in January of 21. And so, they have, sorry, go ahead. So we're, it, what we would be doing would be uh, renewing the one year that was um, uh, uh, that was it, that was it going into effect in January of twenty one. Yes, correct. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you. Do we have go ahead, Commissioner Burns. 
Yes, Commissioner Burnt here. Um, I have a question regarding the letter that was submitted um, just before our meeting began from ORCA. Um, and it seemed to me that it stated pretty strongly that an extension was not um, a valid point at this at, at this time that a reapplication was required. Am I incorrect in that assumption? I think that's the whole uh, question that um, the attorneys have commented on, um, our attorney and also the attorney for Mr. Haley's organization. Based upon the precedent that Luba has, it the the request for this extension was timely filed. So that's what the case law actually says. Um, I, I realize that that Orca has a different position on that, but the position of the applicant is based upon you know Luba's previous rulings. So then, if I may, uh, Shayla, that. Uh, you are considering that the application is still in effect as of right now. Correct. It's there a year. Was, there was no it's, void period. It isn't a period of voidness. The application is in effect. It's just that it makes no sense. And, and I mean, I can cite line and verse as to what the Luba case says, but it, that period of time when it's undergoing the appeal, a reasonable person isn't going to begin construction because, you know, you may have to undo that. I understand that. Thank you. So, commissioners, it's currently five o'clock and we're having um, the council members join us, which they can't be in this vote. So I'm going to propose that we hold off until after our workshop and then come back and vote on this matter. Would that be okay with everybody? Okay. That's okay, fine I'm with sorry. me. Okay. Yeah, we just can't have the council in here just in case there is an appeal. Okay, so we will come back to the planning matters as soon as the workshop is over. Um, and then we can finish the discussion then. Um, okay. Uh, I see Mayor Cox. Carolyn is on. I'm staring really hard. Mr. Haley, we're moving on to the workshop portion right now. So um, you have there will be a public consideration at the end that you're more than welcome to speak to. Is there a way to know how, how long that might last? Hopefully not very, but no. Okay, okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, do I have to call a workshop? Sheila, do I have to call a workshop to order? No, it, it's been noticed as your full meeting. You don't have to call it to order. Okay, good. Okay, so I see Mayor Cox, um, I see Carolyn. Um, I guess uh, planning commissioners, I, I wanted to have this workshop um, just so that we have it from the city council exactly what they're looking for and maybe throwing ideas out. Maybe they don't want us to go this direction, they want us to go this direction. So um, I noted in, I believe it was the October council meeting uh, Mayor Cox said the council wanted us to look specifically at residential zones for vacation rentals. Am I correct? We're rest of old school Italian food with a uh, French pistachio brown butter. I got the cooking when I was younger because I was kicked out of school. What? Okay. I'm not Good sure what that was. But, uh, yeah, when you say it out loud, it does make it sound pretty ambiguous. But yeah, that was <laughs> that was the main intention was to look at the residential areas as the most kind of feasible area that we could could regulate 
because it's you know that's one of the things is defining uh if a vacation rental is a business or not and how it pertains to residential areas because it's a big issue um and yes we have water issues too but but they're both very big issues but housing is the one that we could really paint ourselves into a corner on so that's what we meant by looking at the at the residential areas and we might be able to whip this out pretty fast uh did you all get the packet that, that Jessica sent out, counselors and uh, planning commissioners? Yes, there's good. Yeah, there's good stuff in all of it. Like I like how Coos Bay they uh, their definition of what a vacation rental was right off the bat. That was a good piece. And then Clatsop County, I liked everything in there. Like we could just go down that list and start cutting the fat off that and save ourselves a lot of time. And then uh, Brookings, Brookings defined where where the regulations were. They just had it in the one residential area. So my question, I guess, as I'm reading, do we have any like definition of what a vacation rental would be? Kind of like Coos Bay um, or any of the other towns? Are we literally starting from scratch? basically we're starting from scratch and that's why these templates are so good because they do apply but like who's basically and they have 60 or 70 vacation rentals so that puts us extremely out of proportion with them if we have 35 or 40 but we don't know if those numbers are right either um so yeah i mean long story short yeah we're starting from scratch Commissioners, do you guys have any questions for the council members while they're here about what, what they're thinking they want us to look for? Is it we don't want vacation rentals? Is it we want to have rules on how vacation rentals go? So I think, um, commissioners, this is our time to really kind of pick their brains so we know what direction to go toward. So Commissioner Thielen. Yes, I have a question uh, of the council. Of the council, um, I noticed that uh, Warrington uh, very specifically states in their rules that uh, uh, the R1, R2, the residential areas are for residents and and not for uh, uh, they they actually create a homestay category. Uh, and I want to just I want to just throw that out there if if how much um, interest there is or how how much weight there is on uh, uh, vacation rentals being in in residential zones that are basically 24 hour a day businesses. If that's even should be even considered. Jessica, do we have a number on how many are in residential areas? We, we, I think the last number I saw, we had a bunch of people sign up this week, unfortunately. So I'm going to say the last number I had was about 35. In residential areas? In residential areas, yes. 90% of them were actually in residential areas. And there in lies the I see you. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. So this is kind of goes out to the entire city council. And this is my question is what, what are you trying to solve? What's the problem that we're trying to solve? The, well, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting chair Nareth. Bad habits. <laughs> um. No, I mean, I'm addressing this to the city council. Any, any person or the mayor is free to answer this question. But what problem are you trying to solve here? What's that's that's my question. Uh, initially, it was because of housing shortages. I'm sure you're well aware of employees and workers not being able to find housing, and we're just kind of in this vicious circle of we have we have jobs for people, but all across the board, they haven't been able to find housing from. Uh, Sure, I understand that. And let me, um, may I address that? And, and this is my, 
perception or my thoughts on that is say I'm I go out and I, I purchase a house for two hundred fifty three hundred thousand dollars and my mortgage is you know fifteen hundred two grand a month like how many normal people that live in Port Orford can afford to pay that I can't like so if if you have investors or people that are buying properties in the town of Port Orford um, as as second homes or or uh, you know investment rentals, um, I can't. You know I'm trying to like find a place to live in Brookings, and like the cheapest thing I found was two thousand dollars a month, and I'm like I can't afford that. You know when I eventually get down there and, and open up. And that's me being a business owner. So, I mean, I understand the shortage, you know, we don't have sustainable, um, in my opinion, we don't have sustainable places for people to rent here. You know, these the the, the price of real estate is out of sight. And so if, if we're trying to solve that problem, you know, I mean, I, I don't have an answer for it, but I don't think taking away a property owner's um, ability to rent it and, and, you know, as a vacation rental and be able to make that mortgage payment, you know, I mean, what, what are we going to do? Like hang a lot of people with mortgages that they can't pay. Did you want me to what? finish now? Or? Yeah. Sorry. No, I see where you're coming from, but you know, that we just, we just heard that there's 35, vacation rentals in a residential zone in Port Orford. There's 60 or 70 vacation rentals in Coos Bay. So if you do that math, it's way out of proportion. And there, there's always the new business and more tax revenue side of things, which is our main responsibility as a council, but there's also the community aspect of it. And one way or another, we're gonna need housing, be it a retirement community, or even if it is a vacation rental community, there will need to be some sort of housing for employees and that will be in a residential area. So I think the residential area is one of the, the big concerns. Um, and if we did want to limit the other, you know, the commercial areas or anything else, the standards in class of counties would kind of do that by itself. But I need to let someone else other than me talk, Lauren or Gary. Go ahead, Lauren. Well, I I can just say from my own experience, I lived in Miami and I had roommates and uh, real estate was very expensive there. If you, even an apartment was uh, $1,500, $2,000. But if, you, and if it was a three bedroom apartment or even a two bedroom apartment, you had a roommate and you shared the cost. And I'm sure that that's what many of these people are doing somewhere anyway. They're not staying by themselves. So if you're giving your example of a, a, somebody who's making a mortgage and your mortgage is $1,000 or $1,500, that it would be a, a, you know something that people who would go into it would go into it with roommates. It's not They're not going to be on their own especially the, uh, the, for the jobs that we have here right now in the most, for the most part. And there would be several roommates and they could move into that. What happens is in these residential sex, uh, areas, somebody buys a two or three bedroom home for $230,000, whatever, and then spends another 50, 60, $70,000 on it, knocking out the walls, uh, creating these rooms where multiple people can live in them and putting all the goodies inside and everything so it's like a very nice, cozy place. Then they come back to us and say, well, see, we could never rent, we could never rent them on the regular market because the house now is so expensive and it's not designed for that. But if it was a house that still had two or three bedrooms, like a normal house and a, a living room, several people could live in that house as roommates and still have affordable, still be affordable housing. But that's not what's happening here. These houses are being converted into uh, these uh, rental properties. 
And I understand that, you know, that's their, that's the business that they chose to go into. And, and that's, and, you know, that's the way it is for them, but it's these homes are there. There is no forethought at all of, of using their properties for long-term rentals. It's immediately to go usually to go into and create an Airbnb. So you knock people, you're absolutely right. You knock people out of that marketplace right away. They, they can't afford, they can't compete in price. Uh, long-term rentals, renters and with roommates versus uh, having uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine people in the house. Commissioner Byrne, did you have a question? I said, see your hand, and then I yes. saw your um, count. Yes, uh, Commissioner Byrne here. Um, I actually have two questions. Um, first, I thought our workshop pertained more to short-term rentals, which could be defined as 30, 60 days or less versus long-term rentals. Um, however, maybe that's just a matter of definition. Um, and my second question is, have we, the city, compiled any data with complaints uh, for short-term rentals that are in residential neighborhoods? Um, that might be helpful information for us to make some decisions and suggestions. Well, I can obviously answer that, but we have not received complaints um, directly about any of the short-term rentals. I know that we've gotten complaints about parking and things like that, but nothing directly about the people that are renting or anything inside the homes. Okay. Thank you. And then I think short-term rentals have to be less than 30 days. If you go over 30, then it becomes a long-term rental. So I think we're looking at anything less than 30. Um, Councillor Burns, I did see your hand up. Um, I I feel that we're going to be possibly asking um, planning to come up with a the ideal number of um, short term rentals. If we don't if we don't do it in ordinance at all, then we could just have way too many vacation rentals, and we'd have we could have a whole areas around the lake that um, were nothing but vacation rentals. So to me, I feel we need a, a solid number of um, vacation rentals that come in and help support our businesses. And, um, and I drew a blank there, sorry about that. <clears throat> um, so we so we need a number of them and and then if we're going to do residential areas i feel um r1 and r2 we could have a distance that the vacation rentals had to be apart from each other so we can eliminate uh density in the uh, our residential areas so those are two factors that i personally would see it need to be looked into I think that one of the things that Jessica, I just asked her this over here is I'd like to see the percentage of, excuse me, vacation rentals that make up the entire housing of Port Orford, if that makes sense within the city limits. Um, sometimes a number is really hard to come up with because ultimately, and well, for me, Lauren, when you were talking, and I understand the roommate piece, but when I'm bringing a family to Port Orford to be in the education business or to run a business, I'm not having roommates. Um, and I think, um, and I do see where Commissioner Schofield is coming from, because if we're going to sit and say that you can buy a house in Port Orford for less than 300000 right now, that's an incorrect notion. Um, I think right now, I think I saw on average our housing in Port Orford is like a housing median, I think is like 330. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, as somebody who makes a pretty good wage in Port Orford, I couldn't even afford that. Um, and I know that in a lot of families with two income households, they, they wouldn't make the salary that I'm making um, and have kids. And so 
Um, I think one of the other things that perhaps we need to look at count our commissioners is um, you have to look at the laws, the long-term rental laws versus the short-term. Um, you know, when you get in past 30 days and you start looking at 60 days and one year and two years, there's a lot of laws that turn people off from even wanting to be long-term renters. Um, and I do agree that affordable housing is something that we need to look at. Um, it's something that I worry about every year, especially when we bring in two to three new employees every year with families. Our hope is they don't have to move to Bandon or Gold Beach or even Coos Bay or that they'll take a job in Fort Orford. Um, and housing is huge for us. Um, but I think that it does need to be regulated at some point. So, um, Tim, I saw your hand up, Tim. <coughs> Excuse me, Christy, you caught me off guard. Um, so, so the one thing I would like to speak to is a restriction on vacation rentals is not going to fix affordability of houses in Port Orford. Uh, the market's hot. The only thing that's going to slow it down is a Fed increase, and they do, they're talking about a Fed increase in the interest rates. That's the only thing that's going to slow this market down. Whatever we put in place is not going to slow it down. It's going to create black market housing because, quite frankly, if a person owns a home and they want to rent it out short term, they're going to do it regardless of what we put in place. Um, Port Orford has no way of enforcing an ordinance to stop people from this. Now, I'd like to speak on the other side. I do understand that we do have a housing problem for folks uh, that work in our service industry. It's really, really, it's a bad deal. We want to be able to stop investors from buying blocks of houses like they are in some of the bigger cities. I don't know if that's happening in Port Orford yet, but we do want to be able to control that. Um, we need to come to a number that works for Port Orford and leave all the additional layers of government out of it. Um, we shouldn't be taxing an industry further than we already tax them. Um, the health department should not be involved in inspecting a home for a short-term rental versus a long-term rental. Why would we put those kinds of things in place? I'm just looking at those ordinances that were brought forward. Other than that, I just, I wish I had an answer for this affordability of housing, but I don't. I saw it happen all up and down the coast of California. And unfortunately, folks were pushed out of areas. It's just, it's, it's not a good thing, but it does happen. Thank you, Krista. Thank you, Tim Mayer. So we were, we're this is kind of turning into a discussion instead of a workshop, and it's making me wonder mm -hmm. if we need to take this back to council and narrow it down a little bit, or it's going to be a lot more discussion. Because uh, we're hearing all your points, so it's not like this was a waste of time, but it is, you know, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. The whole motivation was because of the housing. And I think, I think most of this conversation could be as easy as what are we going to do with R1 and R2 and everything else is commercial or, or industrial. So we know we have 35 in residentials. We know kind of what the spacing is right now. Uh, we can get the percentage of that and go from there. So counselors kind of off the hip, is that kind of a good direction that we could start with? Like I, I had the feeling that it was mostly about residential areas and that was the one angle we could kind of control it, but no one had the intention of stopping business or, or affecting the value of people's property, but we have to do something to try to, to regulate this. And it's not like we're the only city that was an issue. Obviously they're doing it all up and down the coast. We have, a few in front of us and there's quite a few more, but a couple of places have withdrawn their, their short-term rental wordage too. So, um, so do we want to bring this back to council or do we want to say that we want to concentrate on residential areas and looking at the distancing and the, the percentage or the per capita? Well, why don't we, or uh, commissioner LaRoche, I see you. And then I have a comment. So go ahead, commissioner or council, councilwoman. Yep.
Okay. What I'm thinking real quick. Sorry. Is what Jessica and I were thinking about is planning, why don't we as a commission maybe start looking at some of, like picking through some of these other cities, like, you know, they have to have a contact. You know, you can't have a house, a vacation rental within 150 yard radius of another vacation rental. Why don't we start kind of going through those and kind of seeing perhaps where Port Orford might be best served in the residential areas. And then Jessica will bring to the council meeting the, the percentage of vacation rentals houses in Port Orford. Um, so, you know, maybe that 35 is only 5% of all the houses. And then she'll actually make, make a map of vacation rentals so council can kind of see where they're located. Maybe there's maybe they're more in the first residential area, nothing in the second. Or, you know, so maybe we got to look at, um, you know, the specific areas. I think Warrington did like type three versus type two. And, and then we as a count, we as a commission can maybe just go through and say, here's some things we really liked from Bandon, Clapsop, Brookings, and that would just really fit kind of what we're thinking of in terms of, you know, us creating some sort of an ordinance, if that's where council wants us to go. What do you think, Mayor? I, that's great. That's, you know, these, that's always the hardest thing is the starting points with these things, especially when you have like a 40-page document. So I think we have a little bearing. And one thing before I forget, Somebody mentioned Garrison Lake vacation rental, rentals earlier, and we need to have some wordage about sewage in there because you don't want to put a four room, you know, vacation rental on a on a septic tank that is compromised, which could be possible out there. I just I noticed that in the class of thing. And that was one thing that was good i don't say and i disagree with tim but all the regulations that the class up one had kind of dictated that you would have nice vacation rentals built to code in a transient or a lodging sort of way because that's the rub for me is is it a business or uh, a rental and the transient part of it makes it the hotel pretty much but i like that idea krista mm -hmm. Commissioners, what do you guys think? Do you want to start maybe just looking at going through other cities' codes and we can kind of say, hey, this would work or not? I mean, this is going to be kind of a, a big bite taken off and it's going to be co controversial, but I think, you know, we got to start somewhere. Go ahead, Commissioner Burns. Yeah, I think that makes sense for us to um, kind of compile a list and weed through and try to um, apply someone else's town's measurements to our own um, so that we can get the process started uh, before it goes to the council. Okay, I see a lot of head nodding. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so um, at the next meeting commission, we'll just start plowing through um, some of this information that Jessica has given us and just come with some ideas and decide what works for us and what doesn't perhaps work for us and start making recommendations. And then the council at the next meeting, you might go, hey, you know, for this residential area, we don't have this money. So maybe we need to input, you know. And they'll do the uh, percentages of vacation rentals in the town um, for the council at the next meeting. Awesome. Any other comments, Greg? Did I see you? Yeah, yes, I just wanted to just uh, uh, say, uh, so we are, uh, uh, we're basically limiting, we're, we're looking at, at, at ways to limit vacation rentals in uh, residential neighborhoods. We, so it isn't, it isn't that we're not going to have any, like Warren did. I don't think we're basically saying yes, but we're going to limit them and this is how we're going to limit them to make it a, a, a something reasonable well i don't think necessarily limit because truthfully i have no i have no desire to tell somebody how, what they can and can't do with their house but perhaps it's amount of if it's a three bedroom house you can't put 15 people in a three bedroom house maybe it's the max is not um, but I they called it controlling growth and now they call it managing growth, but it's not limiting. It's just managing it. We don't definitely don't want to 
cut anything off. But the only thing I could see that might want us to cut it off in R1 or R2 is if we find out that all 35 are in R1 and there's not room left. I would agree on that one. Are there any other questions? Commissioner Jesuit, do I see your hand? I, I, I need to circle back to what Diane said in the beginning and what I'm, I'm still kind of, you know, just look, I feel like we're being asked to go look at stuff for the sake of looking at stuff. What exactly, and then that's what I thought was the purpose of this workshop, having the city council here to give us some direction on what we're looking for, what we're looking at. And yet, you're, Pat, you're saying you need to go back and discuss it within the city council. So why are we? That got changed up with further conversation. That, that changed with further conversation. We kind of hit, hit a spot, and then I had suggested that, and then Krista reeled it back in and, and suggested going through and doing the comparison. So that's how that got there. I just misspoke. And we into a conversation, which so it was, but I mean, like back and forth, why why we're doing it rather than what we wanted to look at. Well, yeah, you know, and I was listening to all that, but why why are we doing this, or why are you guys looking at it? To try to and manage I, our housing crisis as much as we possibly can. Okay, so if we're looking, if we're going and looking at what other towns are doing. That is our objective is to look at what they did with vacation rentals in terms of managing their housing crisis, their housing problems. I think you could say everybody up and down the coast has a housing problem. Mm -hmm. does, it, does that sound like what we're supposed to be doing? So the looking at it in relation to the housing issue. Lauren, you're muted. Let's go to Carolyn real quick, and then I see you, Crystal. I would agree, Jean, that's your, your question would be, yes, how are we managing? Um, and how can we can we make sure that we're not not cutting off but managing that growth? Go ahead, Carolyn. Carolyn, go ahead. I thought the workshop was to try to uh, see how to manage the new people coming in and building and then going to to short-term rentals in a residential area. That's for residents. That's why it's called a residential area. If we have 35 residential rentals in in the residential area, that seems like a lot. Uh, we're a small town. We're not like Coos Bay or Brookings. We're a real small town. We have lots of lots. If people want to come in here and build a vacation rental that's in the commercial zone, let them go there. I Those are areas. Awesome. That's what we need to look at. Where should they go? How Can many should there be? And what would be the rules and regulations, like making sure the houses are inspected? Because I know for a fact there's houses here that's being rented out on a rental like that. And you go in, when you're going into them, you find out they're not so clean. A lot of stuff doesn't work. Well, if you're paying three or $400 a night, everything should be clean and should be well taken care of. <laughs> And the only way to do that is have inspections. That's normally what the fire department does. They go in and they look to see if there's anything there that causes problems in the electrical. Or we don't have gas, which is good. But this was brought up just because we have a lot of, we had a lot of vacation rentals that actually are vacation rentals. And they do not have a license to have it. This is a business. I live in my home because it's my home. A vacation rental is a business. It's not a private home any longer. It's a business. 
and they need to be regulated like any other business does. Thank you, Carolyn. Crystal, I saw you. Well, I'm not on the council, of course, and so I may be speaking out of turn, but I feel like this discussion shouldn't be expected to start the exact what we want because that's what planning process is, is to see what the issues are, see what the community wants and says, and then try to come up with solutions. Um, obviously, people thought that there was maybe a problem blooming or um, some situations that they wanted to look at. And nobody can expect the council to all have the same position any more than the planning commission would all have the same position until you go through a collaborative process where you hear what people are saying and it takes a long time. So, you know, that's that's all I had to say. That's that's kind of what we're all here for is to figure out what we want, I think. Carolyn, Carolyn stated it very well. There's some issues out there that could be bigger issues than we are doing them. And I guess the, the thing is to figure out, is that a problem or are we okay? Thank you, Crystal. No, I would agree. And I think by having the planning commission maybe start listening to comments from the community um, and start looking at different aspects and perhaps what we think and putting numbers and whatever out there for that livability in residential areas versus commercial and then having council look at where our vacation rentals are, what our percentages and maybe giving us more of a direction. I think you got to start somewhere. I think that's a good starting place. And so um, uh, are we all in agreement that's kind of where we want to start? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So at the next planning commission meeting, um, hopefully we'll have some community comments to kind of tell us what um, they're looking for. And I think the word that we need to look for is how do we manage, not how do we stop or how do we let go un unchecked, but how are we managing growth and how are we managing to ensure that, that our residential areas are still for residents, but that people can enjoy them perhaps as a short-term rental in some aspects, but not 20 people. Maybe each house can only have a certain amount of people with parking spots, so on and so forth. So. Um, Mayor Cox. I'm happy. One thing I, I'm not a hundred percent sure on, but I feel like this is transient lodging. So there are different health issues. There are different fire code issues. There's making sure, you know, there, there's stipulations that in, uh, this class of one that some of them do make sense just from the safety issues and, and Rentals and short-term rentals are different in my opinion. So I, I think we can get to the bottom of this and the more we can all say managing, like you say, Krista, I think it'll help us get through it better because nobody wants to stop any business in Port Arthur. We need everything we can get. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think um, I would say that we have, as a planning commission, we have kind of our marching orders. If any, there are any other questions by the planning commissioners for the counselors? Um, and if they're not, I think we need to say goodbye to the city councilman and then go back to the planning matters and have them get off so we can finish voting. Go ahead, Mr. Er, Commissioner Thielen, go ahead. Yeah, I just want one quick question for the, for the council. Uh, so should we put any weight or how much weight should we put on affordable housing or is this even an issue that we're even going to look at now? Oh. We, is that just set aside and we're just going to accommodate the... Uh, Mm, situation uh, and manage it uh, without looking at affordable housing? I don't think we can look at affordable housing. We kind of have to eat the elephant one bite at a time. It might get to a point where it dovetails in, you know, where we do start looking at it, but we, we probably should. We, you know, we might find out that we're not that bad off and that they're spread out and that we can just, you know, kind of cap it in the residential area and go. So, We'll just do a little research and I'll really try to communicate well with you and the council so that we can mire through it. And then Crystal. Thank you. Thank you. You're muted, Crystal. I want to say that I know, I know it intersects because I have a rental and um, I am getting corporate letters from 
out of the area, asking me to change my rental over to a vacation rental. And I that's not just in Goose Bay. I'm sure that's happening in Port Orford, but if not, it will probably. Okay. Um, any other questions for the commission or counselors? Go ahead, Tim. So I agree with Crystal. I believe there have been some people in Port Orford that have been approached um, to switch their rental homes over to vacation rentals. So I think that's that's one of our biggest problems is probably to keep corporate America out of purchasing our local homes. That's that's one of the biggest problems. Affordability is one I don't know that we can fix, unfortunately. Um, and Carolyn has it right. Um, residential zones are are for residents. Um, that's where that's where they live. You know, they shouldn't have to put up with uh, a lot of noise and a lot of parking issues. But I think those are going to be the easy parts of this to fix: the parking issues, limiting, uh, say, a three-bedroom home to two people per bedroom. You know, there are ways to fix those problems. So thank you. And I would like to thank the commission, the commissioners uh, from planning in advance. This is going to be a tough issue, but thank you for your willingness to take this on. Awesome. Thank you. Any other ones? Go ahead, Gary. Um, just a, an idea. Um, if we limited vacation or short-term rentals to locals. I'm curious if there's towns that are doing that. And um, so if we had, and, and to grandfather in all of the existing um, short-term rentals, but eventually that all the short-term rentals would be owned by locals would keep the money in our community and keep the corporate out and um, it just seemed like a an option. Okay, awesome. Any other questions or comments? But, you know, okay, there, yeah. there is the possibility that you go, you know, and do some discovery, have your meeting, and then you come back to us in a couple of months and say that this doesn't have that much merit. We might disagree and have you, you know, try to talk you into pursuing it a little bit further, but but uh, that's what we're here for. So I hope you all have a good night. And thank you for thank all you, you do. Happy New Year. Carolyn. I know right now that out of state and out of our area, people are trying to buy the homes. I've had many offers on my house. There's no reason to be offering me the money they're offering me. It's just ridiculous. And as a person who I'm not going to sell my house, but they're not wanting it for someone to move into. They're wanting it to make a, a vacation rental because I have a fairly large house and a fairly large yacht, lot. Uh, I know places right now where they've got a short-term rental for the house and they got a short-term rental for a little trailer they have there. You know, what is going on? Do they want to take our town and just say, well, we don't need you people here anymore. It's a beautiful area. People want to come and visit. They want to take their vacation here. But we want to live here. So there's got to be some kind of regulations. You know, if you've got, say we've got 100 houses in the residential area and 35 of those are short-term rentals, that's a huge amount. We need to stop letting them build here if they're going to just build vacation rentals if we've already got more than we can handle. We need to know that. We need to know how many rentals is viable for our area. 
I can make a lot of money from my house. But this is my home. I live in a residential area for a reason. It's a residential area. I wouldn't mind if there's a vacation rental or two. But if I had three or four on my street, I'd really be upset. You've got to think of all the things involved. You know, we don't want to stop people from moving here. We don't want to stop businesses from coming here. But if you're converting your home into a vacation rental and you're going to move, that's we're losing full-time people. You know, that's, we just need some regulations to see where we're going, what we want for our town. And I think the people in this town will be more than willing to tell us. <laughs> They're very vocal about things. <laughs> and the water issues will come up for sure. They will. And they are a concern. Um, I don't know how much they, you know, I don't know how much leverage they have on, on zoning issues, but vacation rentals do use a lot more water than the normal houses, and that's a fact. And that's one thing that bothers me about the crisis or not is, is a large portion of the community's water would be going to transient people right. in the summertime when they're using the most water. So it's angles like that. Everybody, nobody wants to stymie business or shut things down. It's it's we have to watch out for the community a little bit too. So I, I think we all understand where each other are at on this and the reasoning why. Now we just have to figure out the strongest uh, the strongest route to go. Awesome. Okay. Well, I think we have our orders. Um, I appreciate the council joining us. Um, we will work on that. And I really do hope that the city comes or the community comes, citizens come and tell us kind of their thoughts. Um, and we'll go from there. So thank you very much, uh, city council members for joining us for this workshop. Um, and we need to move on to the next, the planning matters. So we gotta, we have to go back. So if the counselors, thank you again, if you could get off so we can vote, just in case you have to hear about it, um, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank Krista, you. for your and your team. Happy New Year. Happy New thank Year. you for all your hard work. Yes, appreciate you guys. Oh, we're waiting for one more to get off. Okay, perfect. Okay, so council or commissioners, we're going to go back to planning matters number nine. Um, do you have any other questions before we do any sort of motions? Shayla, is there anything else you would like to add for us on this conditional use permit extension? If there are no questions, no, thank you. Commissioners, any other thoughts or am I ready to entertain a motion? Diane, do I see you waving at me? Uh, yeah, this is Commissioner Schofield. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve conditional use permit extension 1602 and 1603. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Uh, Commissioner Jesuit seconds that. Do I have any discussion? Go ahead, Commissioner Thielen. Um, so, uh, Shayla, I, I want to just recap my my questions earlier. So, uh, my understanding is that the um, application or the the um, the permit, the conditional use permit, is now right now valid because of the the uh, uh, the time period where it was not 
uh, they were not able to use it. So it is now in, in uh, it's still in, in effect. And we would be re renewing it as of January 11th or whatever it is. Yes. Which is, which is in the purvey of our job. That's not, Correct. That's not we can, okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Crystal. You're on mute. I think it would be January, well, you could do it from January 22nd if you wanted to go right from the one year period of the LUBA process. Um, it's so amended. So Commissioner Scofield, will you restate? So your motion on the table is that we approve um, the one year extension for CUP 1602 and 1603 as of January 22nd, 2022. Am I correct? So moved. Commissioner Jesuit, are you still willing to second that amended motion? Yes. Any more discussion? Go ahead, Commissioner Burnt. Uh, yes, Commissioner Burnt. There were some questions that were brought up by um, the public. Will the applicant be required to answer some of those? For instance, um, who the engineer will be prior to uh, this going through? Shayla. I don't believe that we actually have a requirement that they answer those questions at this point in time. This is for an extension, um, but they may have communicated that to Crystal. So perhaps she could answer that question. I don't have that answer. They're on, they're here in the meeting. Uh, Bill Close, Bill Close, and um, also Mr. Haley. So is Bill, is he the new engineer? Is that what I'm hearing? The attorney. Hi, uh, commissioners, I'm Bill Close. I'm the attorney for the applicant. I had the pleasure of defending the last extension at the Land Use Board of Appeals. Um, and although you haven't asked me a question yet, <laughs> I, I would, I would uh, summarize the state of the law as I've summarized it in a letter to the city attorney that when you have a under under code language exactly like yours the land use board of appeals said that when you have a one-year duration on the extension of a permit and someone has the temerity to appeal it to luva and you all go to luva and you prevail and it's determined that the extension is valid, that one year extension begins to run not from the original approval date, but from the date that the Land Use Board of Appeals issues an order. Mr. Claus, I think, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, Ms. Ms. Kulak had already answered that question. Oh, okay. So the question I think was, is who was the engineer? Ah, that was the I don't question. know. I don't know what that's gonna be. Jim Haley can handle that in good form. Okay, go ahead, Jim. Do you have an engineer? I guess is the question on the table. You know what? We're in. We're in next. We've been engineer, interviewing engineers. COVID's caused a real problem with that. We've we've talked to two engineering firms in Coos Bay. The the problem is is dire partnerships tied up with the city and the county, and so we can't use those engineers. All of this will come through in the. There'll be another opportunity for everybody to appeal this when DEQ reaches their final determination. There'll be another hearing and we get to go through all this again. So, so ultimately our then, engineer, our engineer, whoever that may be, will put together an application along with our irrigation consultant that will go to DEQ will be reviewed, finished being reviewed by DEQ. 
and then it goes to your engineer for approval. Everything's overseen by the city's engineer in this, ultimately in this process. So, so ultimately what we're being asked to do, uh, commissioners, is it doesn't matter if they have an engineer now, we're just asking for extensions so they can get that packet together to go through what Mr. Haley has, in, has said, that they have to get the application in for the EQ to the city's engineer. So I think the discussion becomes at this point is we need to vote. Um, we need to vote on the motion on the floor, which is to approve these two CUPs. Um, 1602 and 1603 at, um, to through January 22nd, 2022. Um, and that way then Mr. Haley can get, has the opportunity to get his application together. So um, do we have any more discussion? Go ahead, Mr. Thielen. Yeah, so just to clarify, uh, Crystal or, or Shayla, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, I, am I correct in saying it doesn't matter whether they have an engineer right now? As far as the they law, have, they're entitled. It does not matter. They're entitled to find. A, yeah, they're entitled to find an engineer. Thank you. When it's submitted in the application, it'll be in the public record to the engineers. Is I think our job right now um, is to vote on the motion at hand. So we have a motion. We have a second. I'm going to close discussion for a vote. So Commissioner Jesuit. Yes. Commissioner Schofield. Yes. Commissioner Burnt. Yes. Commissioner Rossi. Yes. Commissioner Thielen. Yes. And Commissioner Nirad is a yes. Motion carried unanimously. And now do we have any public consideration? Okay, um, uh, we have no public considerations. Uh, commissioners, thank you very much for a great meeting. I know it's a little longer, but I think we have our next kind of meeting planned out for us. Um, we'll, we'll really focus on the short-term vacation rentals for the next time. So I appreciate your time today. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Burt, I motion to adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Yeah. Commissioner Thielen, second. I adjourn this meeting at 5.55 p.m. Thank you all very, very much. Thank, Thank you. you. This conference is no longer being recorded.